Good morning and welcome to Jew in the City Speaks with your host, Allison Josephs, also known as Jew in the City. At this organization, on this podcast, we like to speak to Orthodox Jews that are doing out of the box, unusual, cool things in terms of their hobbies, in terms of their interests, in terms of their careers. Um, the really remarkable thing about, um, I guess, sort of the, the times we're living in is that more and more is open to a Shomer Shabbos religious Jew. Um, you know, not that long ago, um, I remember speaking to Tamir Goodman, whose father who passed away since then um, was, you know, one of the first um, Shomer Shabbos lawyers, maybe to wear a yarmulke in court. He, there was a sort of a point in his uh, legal career that there were still first being made. Now, living in the New York area, we're so used to accommodations being made around Shabbos, around Kashras. But the truth is that there are still some industries where uh, we have not had as many opportunities for um, you know people to come out as Shomer Shabbos to be accommodated uh, within that field. Um, and so there's still more work to be done. Um, and the latest news that came out a few weeks ago that we were delighted to hear about is a senior in high school named Ellie Kligman. He lives in Las Vegas. He is being recruited for Division I schools for baseball. Um, and I don't think this has ever happened before. Um, and so we are so excited to speak to Ellie and find out more about his journey um, as a Shomer Shabbos uh, baseball player and uh, what it looks like to uh, be you know, a religious Jew and playing baseball at this level. Ellie, thanks so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So um, I guess give us a little bit of an idea. Usually I say, you know, tell us about your background growing up, but technically speaking, you're still growing up. So tell us about your earlier background growing up. Have you been in Las Vegas your whole life? Um, were you always observant? Uh, yeah, so I was born in San Diego, California, and we moved to Vegas when I was 10. And I've lived here ever since. Um, I have been religious my whole life. Um, that's what I was born into, and that's what I've continued to be. Um, and uh, have you gone to Jewish day schools, public schools? Like, what's your Jewish education been like? So I went to Jewish day school through middle school. Mm -hmm. And then when I got to high school, I did online school through a charter school. So I could play baseball and, you know, everything would work in terms of the religious stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of boys are uh, playing ball as they're growing up, but something about you was different. So the question is, did you take to baseball specifically as opposed to another sport? Um, was there someone, was there some adult that said, you're really good at this? Did you, you know, from within know that this was a passion of yours? How did you go from being, you know, a ball player like any other boy that's playing ball into someone that had to arrange something special for high school to be able to accommodate your ball playing schedule? So, I mean, I, I always played the game just because I love the game. I still play the game because I love the game, but as I've gotten older and I've played better competition and I've played in front of a lot of people, um, I think I started to realize that, you know, I was, I guess you could say better than the average player, but obviously still have a lot of work to do in terms of baseball. But um, yeah, just kind of, as I kept going on, I just kept improving and to this day, you know, still improving and still working hard and stuff. Were there any other sports that you liked uh, close as much to baseball or was baseball always the sport of your heart? Um, that was definitely my favorite sport growing up. Um, I always played basketball and football. Um, so earlier in my like middle school, elementary school, I played competitively and I kind of stopped that as I got to high school, but I still play like, you know, just with my friends and stuff, but baseball is the thing I took most to. So how did you, like when, how, why did you decide, was there a certain point? I mean, because you, you said that in high school, you made this decision to arrange things so that you could have Jewish studies and make room for baseball. So what does that mean practically? Did, did you decide that you're going to try to get into a division one school or try to become, what, what is the goal? Are you going to try to go for the major league? Like what's, what's the dream? Yeah, the goal has always been to be um, a major leaguer and the first one that doesn't play on Shabbos and that hasn't ever really changed. And in terms of the accommodations, um, that's been happening my entire life. Um, from the time I was really eight years old, um, people have moved games and adjusted schedules so we could play the most that we could play. Amazing. And so this was happening in Las Vegas. Was there ever, um, would you say, like, 
any pushback or any, um, are, like meaning are, are people happy to make accommodations? Did it ever have to, um, you know, take more work or more conversations or what, what sort of feedback was around accommodations? I mean, it's pretty much always been, everyone really wants to help us. And mm -hmm. of course they've had to work, we've had to work hard sometimes to, uh, to get that accommodations done. And when I first started playing baseball, I played in the little league in San Diego and we had, and they wouldn't change in the games for us. So we can only play like half of the games in the year, which obviously sucked because, you know, you want to be there all the time. And then my father went to a league in San Diego um, called North City. And he talked to them, explained who we were and what we were about. And they ended up agreeing to change games and everything for us. So our team never played a game on Shabbos. And we had a bunch of other Jewish people um, from around the community that would come and play. And they'd end up playing our team because we didn't play on Shabbos. Awesome. Do you think they made the accommodation because you were so good? They were like, this kid's really got talent. We have to find a way to include him. Or was it like someone who's Shomer Shabbos has a request, we'll try to find a way. I mean, not to like, you know, have preferential yeah. treatment to good people, but like, let's be honest, like sometimes you can, um, you can get better treatment because people say we have to include this person in our, uh, in our team. Yeah, I definitely say sometimes they might be a little bit more inspired to uh, help you change games. Uh, especially when I'm helping the team win. And when I'm not on the field, uh, it kind of hurts the team a little bit. But um, I'd say it definitely helps um, when you're a little better. But these people were willing to make accommodations for anybody, really. That's awesome. Um, and so, so you decided going into high school that you're going to give it your all, no matter what sort of that looks like. So that, so like, like run us through what is your, what does your daily schedule look like in terms of baseball training and then secular school and Jewish school like how, how does a day in the life of Ellie Kligman look yeah so usually um you know in the morning I'm davening and you know eating breakfast and you know doing my school work and stuff and then usually sometime in the early afternoon I go to the gym for a couple hours I have to I gotta work out and then after that I'll usually head to the field I'll hit take ground balls uh, play catch and all that kind of stuff um, and during the season schedule is a little different because I'm at the field from like one o'clock four thirty but obviously we haven't had a season in a long time. So um, it's a little more toned back that I can't be on the field all the time, but definitely it's, it's an all day thing. And then, okay. And so you have studies and then, so it's, it's a few, so it's a certain amount of practicing on your own with like a ball machine, like throwing balls at you, right. And you're hitting those and you're catching those and grounds like that sort of thing. Uh, no, I usually just work out with my brother and my dad. Got it. Okay. I'm just trying to picture like, what does this uh, look like? Yeah. And what, and what about in non COVID times? Is it like a team time where the team is meeting every day? Yeah. So usually from December to about April, May, um, we're with the, I play with the local high school, the high school that I'm zoned for. So from about one fifteen to four thirty, we would have practice every day, every day we're playing a game and um, we would, and then on game days, we would, you know, be at the field at like two o'clock or like 1.45, and we'd have a game at 3.30 for a couple hours. Um, and the high school has been amazing about um, not getting games on Shabbos and everything. Uh, this high school is a Cimarron Memorial High School. Um, mm -hmm. And Coach Hubel has been really good about changing games and getting the schedule so that we're not on Shabbos. Um, mm -hmm. And so he can adjust the schedule to where um, me and my brother can be there all the time. Mm -hmm. Your brother also plays? Yeah. Got it. All right. He's the younger younger brother? Yeah. So we're trying to uh, maybe groom a couple, a couple of uh, top yeah. uh, ball players in the family. All right, that sounds good. Um, stay in the family business. Um, do you feel a pressure of being like the Jew on the field? Because I've spoken to other athletes. Um, I don't know if you heard of AJ Edelman, who's uh, the first Orthodox Jewish man to go to the Olympics. He played ice hockey in school, and he said he has felt sort of a pressure of kind of that ne necessity to make a kid a Shashem, especially like sometimes in sports, I guess maybe hockey is more violent than baseball, but he, you know, sort of um, a pressure and a knowledge that being sort of the religious Jew in that space that he has to conduct himself in a certain way that people should come off seeing religious Jews in a positive way and not like, oh, that guy's a jerk or, you know, a, yeah. a bad sportsman. Do you have thoughts about any stories like that or any experiences or? Um, not really. Um, I just kind of, you know, I'm just trying to be myself and, um, and I'm not trying to be someone else and, you know, put all this pressure on myself to, to do all I have to do. But 
Um, and obviously, you know, you try to carry yourself the right way and make a kid as a with everything. But I mean, I, I just try to be myself and I guess that comes out. Mm-hmm. And any like, so you said the people that you've always played with on your team have always been very receptive. What about uh, teams you've played against? Has it ever come up? Or is there any way even that they would know that you're a religious Jew? Do they know that their game was changed because somebody was a Sabbath observer? Like, is this ever anything that you're aware of as a conversation or a point that people know about? Um, I We've never really um, gotten any backlash from any other teams before. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, before this season, uh, which obviously we didn't get we didn't get to play, but there was a game scheduled on Pesach. So mm-hmm. uh, we had a bunch of people from the administration at our school, our coaches, teammates, parents, and the other school too. We basically said um, we have a player that can't play in this game um, because he's a religious Jew. Um, can we change the game? And then the two, we both both teams found a date that worked. But there was somebody in the administration of the like school board that would not change the game. And then mm-hmm. we had so people from our school, our parents, uh, teammates, everyone kind of banded together, and we eventually got the game changed um, off of Pesach. We didn't get to play it, but it was pretty awesome to see everyone kind of come around, both on the other team and our team. That's very cool. Um, so what is the, what's the process of being recruited for um, a, a college baseball team like as someone who nobody wanted to recruit personally? Um, what, how, how do you, how, how does this process work? Do, is it a certain number of, I don't know, hits, like a batting average that, you know, gets sent to certain schools? Like how, how do they find you? Do you find them? Like just for those of us that have no idea how this process works, like how, how does one get recruited for a division one school? So a lot of the time, the schools will come see you when you're playing club ball or travel ball in the summer. So I play with a program called TV SoCal. Um, Coach Benny and Ryan Thompson have been really great about changing games. So obviously I can be there and play in front of the schools. And they've built up a really good reputation of having really good players. So as you play in the summer, a lot of schools will come to the game. So we'll have like 15, 20 schools at the games. And they'll watch you play. And it's not really a specific stat that they're not sending batting averages or anything like that. Um, the schools are just coming to see you play in person. And if they think you're good enough to play at their school, they will eventually, you know, come out to watch you play more and eventually try to get you to their school. Do you have to play better as a Shomer Shabbos player? Meaning if you're going to ask them to start making accommodations, do you think you have to do better than um, your peers or is being just as good enough as any other division one recruit good enough and hopefully they'll accommodate. Oh, I don't know. I've never really thought of it like that. It was just kind of, you know, they're, you know, doing a great thing and helping me play games and I'm just going to go out there and perform the best that I can and try to help them win. And mm-hmm. in doing that, um, show people that I can play. What, um, what's public right now? Like, you know, I know the news came out that you're being recruited for division one. So were you in talks with different schools? Is the Shabbos accommodation part of the talks? Like what can you say publicly at this point? So I, I am talking to schools and the Shabbos thing is obviously something that I have to tell them about because it's a big deal, um, especially to them in terms of accommodating me. But the schools that I am talking to currently, they are, the coaches have been really helpful in, um, expressing their want to help me and accomplish this thing that no one's ever done before and um, accommodate me and, you know, try to get me into their program so that I can help them win games. Um, and has anyone, is, it's still sort of on the table. No one is actually committed that they can do this for sure. It's more like they're trying to figure out how that could work. Is that where you are at this point or? Um, I don't know if anybody can say they 100% know that they can do it for sure, but mm-hmm. I think that these uh, these coaches are pretty sure that they can help me out, and they're pretty sure that um, you know when you say stuff to coaches, and the you know in the meetings where they're going to um, you know get the schedule, that I mean, what coach is going to say we're not going to accommodate the kid who can't play on Shabbos? Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of the schools, the schools that I talked to, have all been really helpful, and they think that they can do this, and it can be done. Have you- have you reached out to other um, Orthodox athletes that have um, kind of gone further along the lines? I mean, there's not that many of them, but do you, do you know any of the other ones out there that have made some historic um, moves in their sport? Um, pretty much just Tamir Goodman. Uh, no one's really done this in my sport yet. So mm-hmm. uh, we had a conversation with Tamir a long time ago, I think back in the spring, and he kind of explained to us how, explained to us how important the coaches are. 
and mm -hmm. how much the coach can, how much power the coach really has to help you accomplish what you're trying to do. And he explained kind of the ins and outs of what to expect and um, kind of what needs to happen for this to work. Do you see yourself as hopefully like a trailblazer that will open up baseball now for other Shomer Shabbos kids as a possibility once they've, you know, worked with Ellie Kligman, now other kids can have this dream? Uh, for sure. Not just in baseball um, or even in sports, just to show people that um, you don't really have to sacrifice your religion and what you believe for doing what you dream. And I think that can go along to anything in life, really. That if you really, if you're good enough and you work hard enough and you can, and you, uh, and people are willing to help you, that it can't happen. Um, do you look to people like Sandy Koufax as sort of like, um, kind of like role models or people in the past that, um, you know, made a stand? I mean, he wasn't Shomer Shabbos himself, but he made that stand. Do you kind of see yourself maybe like, you know, Koufax 2.0 or from Koufax? Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's pretty cool to be in the same sentence as him, but. I mean, I'm just happy I can take it one step further by not playing on Shabbos at all. You know, he kind of, he introduced it, but I hope to continue it. Mm -hmm. And it's been a lot of time in between, right? That that was really uh, a few yeah. generations ago. For sure. Um, where does God fit into baseball? Like where does prayer or, um, you know, tefillah, is that, is that part of your process at all in terms of getting your head in the right place? Is faith part of baseball? Like, um, do you bring, I mean, obviously as an observant Jew, you bring Judaism everywhere you go, but is that any part of your process of getting your head in the game or, you know, being focused, uh, involve anything Jewish? Uh, I wouldn't really say it really involves anything Jewish, but, um, cause I, they're kind of two separate things. Obviously the Judaism kind of goes wherever, uh, ever I go really, but, um, you know, I, I haven't let the baseball kind of interrupt the Judaism. So I just, I, don't know, I wouldn't say the, the prayers or anything kind of mentally gets me ready for a game. Mm -hmm. Maybe you try it. No. Um, and uh, we'll see. Um, I mean, don't take sport advice from me. Um, and so like, what's the time frame for um, like deciding where you'll go to school? Like when, when will you know where you go to school approximately? And then what would the process be like from, being a division one player, God willing to possibly the major leagues. Like, can you take us through that timeline? So I hope to commit sometime in the spring. Mm -hmm. um, that's just kind of when we've kind of known that is probably going to happen. Um, in terms of after that, I don't know. And no one can really tell me because it's never happened before. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just going to keep just taking it one day at a time and have, try to have some fun with it. What, what is the average timeline for, um, the, uh, well, first of all, I guess let's just clarify, if you're in Division One school, that makes you automatically open for the major leagues to start doing recruitment like that. Is, am I correct on that? Or uh, Yes, and they can also do it in high school. Um, mm -hmm. I've had a little bit of interest from the major league teams um, right now, and a lot of kids can get drafted out of high school, and I won't really know if that's going to happen until the spring when it's kind of more near the draft, but mm -hmm. um, there definitely is interest right now. Also, they already could draft you out of high school. Wow, that's very cool. Aha. Uh -huh. And then what, how long is it? Four years of college? People do the four full years of college and then they go on to the major league or people leave college in the middle? So you can get drafted after your junior or third year of high school or college pretty much. Got it. So okay. So you have, uh huh. Um, very cool. Um, do you have any thoughts as to why? I mean, I think. Jews in general, and this is something that um, back to A.J. Edelman, the first uh, you know, Orthodox male Olympian, we spoke about a little bit. He thinks that Jewish kids don't really believe that like sports or athletics are a way that they could you know, make a career or not. It's not really like a thing that most of them feel like they're, um, they could go into. Have you considered that before, that it's not as common for the Jewish community, the Orthodox Jewish community? And if so, why not? Um, I mean, I've never believed that I couldn't do it. Um, mm -hmm. I've never really known people that have kind of had that opportunity to do it and haven't done it. Mm -hmm. um, so I haven't really experienced that. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for any parents listening or maybe any youngsters listening who think they may have a talent in, you know, one of these areas, but um, they're not sure how it could fit in? I guess just in terms of like, 
uh, how to commit to your sport and then sort of what are some of the steps you take to, you know, take things to the next level? So first of all, um, if you are at that level, you need to work really hard to stay at that level. A lot of people can get there when they're 12 or 13, but they fall off because they just didn't work as hard as everyone else. So working hard, um, believing in yourself and just knowing that really anything is possible. Um, if you're good enough and it will happen um, and people are willing to accommodate you if you stay powerful in your faith. I have definitely learned that if you stay strong in your Judaism and your religion, people are, will help you. Um, if you kind of show doubts and, uh, and things like that, people will kind of see that and not really want to help you as much. But when I tell people, listen, I'm from sundown on, on Friday to nightfall on Saturday night, I'm not playing, then people will help you. But if you tell them, oh, maybe I'll play on Saturday, then they're just not going to help you because they don't need to. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's a strong thing, knowing, knowing where your boundaries are. Has anyone ever expressed, um, I guess, admirations that someone your age has convictions like you do? Because, I mean, if you think about it, a lot of people will do a lot of things to get ahead. Um, maybe even some, you know, not nice things, not honest things. And here you could be a perfectly ethical person, you know, playing baseball on Shabbos, but you have sort of a, a higher calling or more of a conviction not to do that. Has anyone expressed to you that, you know, that causes them to respect you? Uh, definitely. Um, it's interesting because to me, not playing on Shabbos and kind of the Judaism and baseball balance, it's normal to me because I've done it my whole life. And then some people will, you know, they'll express that admiration for what I'm doing. And it kind of puts into perspective what I'm trying to accomplish, which is awesome. Have you come across either any um, Orthodox kids that have told you that they're looking up to you as something that they'd like to be in a few years or any non-observant Jewish kids that are looking to you as a sort of an inspiration for further observance that they would like to do at some point or grow into either of those possibilities? So in terms of the religious um, players that are kind of on that path, I guess you could say, uh, I've gotten I have some some DMs and stuff after the article came out, which is cool. And I'm, uh, I'm happy to help in any way I can and try to you know, guide them through whatever they need. I haven't experienced the baseball players trying to get more religious, but hopefully <laughs> I will run into that soon. That's very cool. Um, and I guess the other thing on the point of faith, you know, because we asked about prayer to get yourself ready. What about big disappointments? Have there, ha have there been any big disappointments in terms of games you lost or games you couldn't play? And has faith been able to frame disappointment for you? Because I think just as much as for myself, Amuna is a thing to hope for and to sort of uh, center myself on, it's also a way that I cope with things not working out the way that I wanted to, if things don't go as I hope they would in life. Has, has that ever been, you know, something? And look, you're a young kid, so <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, so definitely in terms of missing games, you know, missing big games and wishing I could be there for my teammates. Um, as much as it sucks, I already knew what I was getting into. So I know that I'm not playing on Shabbos and I know that I'm accepting whatever's going to happen with that. Um, and in terms of disappointments, like on and off the field or whatever, um, I don't know if uh, the Emuna and the Judaism has helped me put that in perspective or that's already ingrained in me. But, um, you know, you just always have to learn to take it in stride and move on. Is there a particular subject in school, a Jewish subject that you like learning more than other? If we had to say your favorite Jewish subject. I like the Chumash. It's pretty interesting. You know, all the stories and the Rashi and everything. It's pretty good. I enjoy it. Um, I have two boys myself. Um, one is uh, specific, especially into sports, uh, football and basketball. And he's only 12, so he has some time to go still. But I think, and I think as, he's learning Gemara this year, he's getting more into learning. But sometimes he expresses things like, you know, kind of football is cooler than being Jewish. Football is cooler than Minion. Um, what do you think your parents did uh, to raise you to become like this, just for tips for myself or anyone listening? How did they ingrain in you um, that the Judaism comes first and baseball may be fun and may be your passion, but that the foundation is that you're a Jew and that's, um, that's the priority. That's really uh, incredible. So I think the biggest thing was when we were younger, they always taught us why we were doing everything. Like why mm -hmm. we weren't playing on Chavez, why we we're you know following all these laws that no one else follows. And then mm -hmm. as I grew up, that's just kind of what I did. Um, mm -hmm. 
and I never let, you know, obviously the outside influences of maybe wanting to play baseball in Chavez kind of get in my way. And I just kind of went with that. And another big thing was they never really pushed anything on me too much. Um, I mean, obviously I went to day school, so I learned Gemara and I learned Chumash and I learned all that, um, but they never pushed me to do too much as to kind of push me further away from the Judaism. They just kind of mm-hmm. let it come up pretty naturally. And so when it comes naturally, you enjoy it. So you're saying that, and I think I totally agree with that. You, you make the home a place of communication where kids can understand why they do it, have space to ask questions, and you never force it on the kid. You make it a positive thing. And I imagine they've also worked very hard to show you that um, most of the time you'll be able to do what you want to do. And it's not like being Jewish has to ruin uh, your dream too often. Only maybe sometimes there's a conflict. Only on shop. Only on shop. <laughs> okay. Well, um, it's really incredible. Um, every time I speak to someone um, who is, you know, kind of moving the needle in a new industry, um, the, you know, the history books will remember you. I mean, you're making history right now and there's going to be, you know, kids, um, every year that are born that get out into the field or the rink or wherever they are. And they say, I can do this now because Ellie Kligman, you know, push it that much further. So, um, we wish you a lot of Hatzlacha in, um, finding the right fit with the school and maybe even with a major league team. Um, and you should continue to be a kid of Shashem and have so much clarity and so much conviction, um, and, and play ball so well. Thank you. Okay, and uh, thank you so much for listening. You can catch us same time, same place next week. Bye-bye.